A couple meets in a foreign country. They know little about each other, just that they're attracted. But there's a problem. He's probably not as sophisticated, let's say, as he could be, and she's engaged to the premier's son. Still, they have a brief love affair, laying down the rules of engagement beforehand. We won't reveal our identities, and we won't fall in love. But rules, as you know, are made to be broken, and that's exactly what happens in C. Michael Bennis' exciting new novel, Rules of Engagement. Michael joins us this morning as part of our book author series. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Danielle. I'm glad you're here with us this morning because the book is a really good book. Where did the premise come from? Well, thank you. The premise came actually from a real life experience. In 1964, I was in London to pick up a car and I went to a, a club and I met a very attractive French girl and that started a romance that continued until I left London. Oh, and I want to talk about how okay. your real life encounter ended in just a bit, but, but first tell me about the, the two main characters in the book. All right, Nicole Bocart is French aristocracy. Her family probably has more money than many countries in the, in the United Nations. She has a cemetery that goes back to the 14th century. Alex has none of these. He's, uh, his father is a psychiatrist, but Alex is a great athlete. He's a wonderful dancer, and they both have this attraction for each other, this chemistry that's incredible. Mm. But they put up rules and kept each other from going too far because obviously she couldn't refuse the premier's son and he wasn't in the same league, league yeah. as yeah. Nicole. Yeah, and I know that, that in the book, and without trying to give away too much, but in, in the book, the parting was just absolutely excruciating it for was. this couple when they had to part. So they'd realized they'd fallen in love with each other, but life was taking them into uh, different directions. And so I love that about the book because you're kind of on the edge of your seat. But the other thing I love is that the exotic locales are absolutely amazing. I love the mystery, the, the twists and turns and all of these things. Did you intend to make these key elements of the book? No, I didn't. I started out with a premise and, and uh, then I filled in some time that I had in memory from advertising. Thing. But once the characters became involved, they I kind of lost control. They went off on their own, and yeah. uh, I was tracking what they were doing, and sometimes amazed by where it was getting me. All right, so you know, not that I have any experience in this area, but this is what I've heard. When you have a summer romance, what happens during the summer stays <laughs> right. in the summer. But that was not the case with this particular couple because they end up actually meeting again 20 years later under completely different circumstances. Yes, they do. Alex has suddenly now become very, very successful. He's a wizard on Madison Avenue, and he goes to the fifth largest advertising agency in the world, knocks on the door of the CEO, expecting to present his publication, and the door opens, and it's Nicole, his wow. sweetheart. She's married. He's not. 22 years have gone by, mm -hmm. and she proposes the rules of engagement again, and he reluctantly accepts. All right, but wasn't she? She's married, though. Yes. Okay, so that's another little plot that's twist. That's another little wrinkle. There are plenty of wrinkles, <laughs> My yes. My goodness. But, but at the end of the day, and you and I talked about this a little bit, really what you want to convey in the book is, is that true love knows no boundaries, right? This is true. The, the true love really isn't restricted, but we ourselves put the boundaries on true love. Mm. And what the boundaries we put on, the only way to reignite true love is to remove them. So how did your summer romance well, Actually, end. my summer romance ended uh, when I drove off in my car, sadly. We communicated, but uh, she went back to Paris. I went back to Boulder to graduate from college, and uh, I've never heard from her again. Never heard from her again? No, yeah, yeah, we've had no communication. But I know that you, you did find her on Facebook, right? Yes, I did, and I was blocked after I found her. So you found her and you sent a message? And she blocked you? No, I didn't you? send oh, a okay. message. <laughs> Somehow or another, she realized I sourced her, and Bang. Oh, Goodbye. Wow. So I have no idea. You have no idea. I don't think she wants to contact me after 46 years. Well, you know what? It's okay because you went on to marry a lovely woman. You're yes. married. You have a, a wonderful son. And so life took you in another direction. And sometimes those things happen for a reason as well. That's true. So uh, I, I do. I really like the book. I think it's very well written. And I think our viewers will connect with it because this is something that can happen to anybody. You know what I mean? Something that can happen to anybody. So very well done, Michael. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Mm -hmm. And once again, the book is called Rules of Engagement. This is the book right here. For more information on C. Michael Bennis or for a copy of the book, please visit cmichaelbennis.com.